Season 8, the start of the hit era, a very divisive era in the fanbase. For those of you who are new to my channel, I have already talked a great deal about Season 8 in two separate videos. One could argue more than I really needed to. And I have already spoken in great detail my opinions on nearly every episode. These ones are the only ones I haven't talked about yet, but that's only because I didn't own them on DVD, nor did I ever see them when I was a kid. I'll only be making shorter opinions on these episodes in this video. But if you want more detailed opinions, my other Season 8 episodes are linked in the description. Now then, Season 8 itself. When I first saw this as a kid, I was very surprised on how nearly everything has changed. A new theme song, different sets, a higher frame rate in the camera work, a brighter look, different music, longer episodes, and additional songs and learning segments. The only things that have remained the same are the usage of models, and Michael Angelis was still the narrator. Remember when I said most of Season 7's episodes were above average? Well, Season 8 is... honestly on a similar level, maybe 3% lower. Since most of the hit era has episodes focusing on the newly established main cast, aka the... <sighs> the Steam Team, ha ha ha. There's not a lot of focus on other characters, like Salty, Harvey, Arthur, Murdoch, Bertie, Cranky, Donald, Douglas, or all of the others. They have instead been reduced to either secondary or background characters. Or characters like Doc, Oliver, Toad, Terence, and Fergus didn't appear at all. Fergus, I kinda understand, but why the former four? As for the Steam Team lineup themselves? It's a pretty good lineup. It has the first seven numbered engines, Thomas, Edward, Henry, Gordon, James, Percy, and Toby. And since this was 2004, they wanted a female character into the main cast. So they also added in the very recent Emily in there as well. Why did they choose Emily? She was the only female steam engine at this point. No, really. Literally every other female character was either a diesel, a coach, a car, or sentinel lorries. As to what I think of Emily in Season 8, well, I'm just gonna play this clip from this video I uploaded last Christmas. That will show you my opinions. She went from being kind, caring, helpful, mature, compassionate, and always sensitive to the feelings of others, to a fussy, rude, rebellious, and bossy bitch to the others. Just look at her in Emily's new coaches, and then as good as Gordon back to back, and you will notice a big difference. My opinion on it? I don't get why they did it. The fact that they drastically changed Edward, Toby, and especially Henry's characters was strange enough, but to change the character they had just introduced last year in a season lightly under Hit Entertainment's management, with two whole episodes clearly showing the best examples of her personality, why? Her character in Season 7 is fairly unique compared to the rest of the Steam Team, and episodes like Emily's Adventure would have somewhat worked with her old one, so why give her the same character as Gordon and James? They already have bossy fussy characters. In other words, I do not like the character change. Now then, the episodes. Um, they were alright. They aren't perfect by any means. I mean, for God's sake, I spent nearly 90 minutes pointing out every single problem, character blunder, and inconsistency in all but six episodes. But it's not the worst, either. Yeah, most of these stories are very simple. Most of them follow a similar formula. Most of them have morals for kids. But hey, it could have been executed a lot worse than this. Remember my list of bad episodes last season? 
Well, here's my list of good episodes from this season, ones I personally like more than others. Thomas to the Rescue. It's not because it was the first episode on the first DVD I ever owned, though it is a bit of a coincidence, but because it's another don't judge a book by its cover story. And I like those kinds of stories. When diesels break down, what do you do? Find an alternative. This is sure to bite the mainland in the arse, I'm sure. Thomas saves the day. I really don't like the first half of this episode. You know, when Thomas purposefully speeds over the difficult bend to get past it quickly. But I think the second half of this episode makes up for it. Not only did he save the new station from some runaway trucks, but he had also shown some form of development by being able to make it past the difficult bend without Annie and Clarabelle reminding him. And even when he is hurrying to get to the signal box. I like that. Percy's big mistake. It's the kind of episode we don't usually get in this show. The kind where someone has misunderstood something someone else has said, usually something cruel or dark. He tries to make up for it, but he fails and gives up, leading to them telling him what he really said. It's a cliched storyline in most shows, but in Thomas, especially in this era, where most of the stories are the same, it's a nice change of pace. Plus, I think the cinematography and camera movements are enjoyably different to most other episodes. Emily's New Root. It's one of the only episodes this season where Emily is closest to her original Season 7 persona, the other one being Halloween. I'll get to that in a minute. It does have a three-strike formula in it, but only in the first half, so it doesn't take too long. And, as unintentional as it might have been, since Castle Lock is a Scottish castle, I bet you the seals in Black Lock were inspired by the Loch Ness Monster. Or at least James's rumours were. Edward the Great. It's basically the tortoise and the hare, but with steam trains, which I find quite creative. It's one of the only hit era episodes where Edward is in character. Somewhat. It was the second time Spencer got a chance to boastfully shine. Literally, in his charming ways. Squeak, rattle, and roll. I personally think Gordon thinking the Fat Controller would scrap him just because he's making some strange noises is over the top and rather silly. But I like that Gordon was pretty much in a lose-lose situation in this episode. If he went slowly, the children would miss their boat trip. But if he went quickly, the Fat Controller would hear his squeak and his rattle. He'd know Gordon was wearing out and send him to the scrapyard. And how determined he was to make it to Brandom on time, in spite of his inevitable fate. James goes too far. James gets himself into trouble, not because he was thinking about his shiny red paintwork, like the previous James episodes this season. He was actually focusing and determined to get his job done, but he just didn't take care of himself or others. He was feeling too proud about doing an important job, but at least he was actually doing said job, unlike James gets a new coat, and he did did redeem himself from his mistake by helping Diesel. Halloween, the creepy dark visuals, Angelus's slow, eerie storytelling, the unsettling music, and of course, the chase scene. Enough said. And my personal favorite from this season, you can do it, Toby. I personally think that this is pretty underrated. A little old steam tram, whom bigger engines like Gordon look down upon, was able to prove his worth. No, no, more than his worth. Twice, because engines like Thomas respect him deeply. And even Gordon, the engine who rudely neglected him, now respects Toby a great deal after realizing he is stronger than he looks. Although, I think it would have been better if Percy was the lead role instead of Toby. 
However, that's only nine episodes that I actually like. The rest of them are either below average or just plain bad. Some of them have very similar story structures as one another. Some have backwards representations of the characters. Some act as if they had never heard of continuity. And some of them just make the characters unlikable in order for the plot to happen. My least favorite episodes are Percy's New Whistle, Thomas and the Tuba, Henry and the Wishing Tree, Thomas, Emily and the Snowplow, Thomas and the Circus, Chickens to School, As Good as Gordon, and Thomas Gets It Right. In which he didn't get it right. The sets do have some detail here or there, but they are just really bland this season. Most of the familiar sets just look so bare, like they should have added more to them. I still like a couple of sets, like The Fishing Village, Black Lock, Brendan Docks, The Smelter's Yard, Farmer McCall's Farm, The Coastal Track, and Kelsthorpe Road Station, but the rest are just... Ugh. But I'm still glad that they are still using some CG special effects carried over from Season 7, from snowfall to blowing autumn leaves. I can never tell if Percy's magic carpet is CGI animated or practical when it's flying. They still use the clever swapping edit from Season 7 at least once, and... Wait, 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 wait. Am I seeing things, or did Gordon just... Wink at Percy. I've watched this episode so many times as a kid, and I had never noticed that. How come they never did this again? Let's talk about the new music. Hit Entertainment had hired Robert Harnshaw to do the music for the show now, replacing Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell. Even though his music isn't really as catchy and addicting as theirs, Harnshaw's music is still really good but mostly in Season 8. I like all of the new character themes, and some of them suit the engines pretty well. Thomas's theme with all the flutes. <laughs> the use of trumpets for James's theme. The Grand Majesty of Gordon's Theme simplicity of Edward and Toby's themes. throughout the season. <laughs> My favorite piece, as I've already explained, is the chase music from Halloween. It's an amazing combination of scary, epic, and thrilling. <laughs> For the vocal songs? Yeah. The Mike and Junior music, 
especially the later ones, had different instruments and different genres like jazzy, scary, calming, silly, or Christmassy. But nearly all of the hit era songs sound like they have the exact same instruments in them, the same genre, all the same child singers, so much to a degree that they all just blend into each other. I can easily tell Really Useful Engine apart from Thomas We Love You. I I can tell between the snow song and winter wonderland, salty from down by the docks, accidents will happen from troublesome trucks, little engines from never 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 give up, but these? Not at all. Sorry, but I did like a fair amount of songs in this season. Surprises, A World Around You, Determination, and my favorite, The Sound Song. Hell, I don't even think the new theme song and the engine roll call is that bad. I obviously prefer the original theme song, but it's still good enough to keep. So, this season is about... 40-60 for me. 45-55? 42.5, 57.5? I don't know. Some episodes are pretty good, like Halloween and You Can Do It Toby, whilst the rest, like Chickens to School and Percy's New Whistle, were below average. I like that they still use computer visual effects from Season 7, but at the same time, most of the sets are pretty bare and bland. The new music is really good, but Mike and Junior's beauties will be missed. Even though this season is the biggest downgrade so far, I'm not too disappointed that I grew up with most of this season, and is pretty much nostalgic for it. I think the reason I kept re-watching these episodes as a kid was because they were quite similar to season 7. So that's... something, I guess. But... Do you want to know what the bad news is? Season 8 is the best season of the hit era. It's going to get downhill from here, and it will get worse and worse and worse. Why am I so sure on this? <clears throat> Pray for me. Mother of God, pray for me.